Hi, everyone, and welcome to your second lecture of week three of technical writing. Uh, this one's called Spatial Orientations. And I do have to say, after I read the article uh, that I'll give my short lecture on here, uh, it's been something I haven't been able to stop thinking about with technical writing. It's it's such a cool concept and such an interesting way of thinking about not only uh, the spaces and places around us, um, but also the maps and directions and things like that we use to represent them. And so, uh, yeah, this one's called Spatial Orientations, and I'm drawing entirely from this article titled Spatial Orientations, Cultivating Critical Spatial Perspectives in Technical Communication Pedagogy. Uh, pedagogy is a big word for teaching philosophies or teaching strategies by Elise Verzosa Hurley, uh, who after getting her uh, professorship at Illinois State University um, reflects, having only visited the Midwest once before during my whirlwind campus visit, my entire spatial orientation changed. And so that's the first time you see uh, this phrase spatial orientation in the uh, article. And so from this really personal experience, getting a new uh, professorship in a new part of the country that she really hadn't been to before, uh, Hurley reflects more. I begin this chapter on integrating spatial perspectives uh, in technical communication pedagogy with this narrative in order to underscore the ways in which the workings of our everyday lives, whether personal or professional, are, comp are comprised of numerous and overlapping spatial stories. Uh, and so, like I said, um, uh, in the first lecture, some of these, uh, the last two rather of these articles draw on um, a book for teaching technical writing, which again, I'll, I'll provide the full uh, citation below. Um, so I'm not sure I'm supposed to be giving away the secrets of how we teach. Um, but I really did just want to present this article to, to you and then uh, show where, where your assignment this week is coming from. And so, yeah, she's investigating this whole idea that um, the spaces we inhabit, they themselves have stories. Uh, and not only do they have stories, but, but we give them particular stories, um, whether uh, we end up uh, finding a regular spot that we like to work, um, where we see all sorts of different kinds of people and different kinds of interactions, and we start to talk about the place uh, in a particular way um, that that both the space itself and ourselves are, are kind of changed through these overlapping stories that we give them. And uh, and this includes our technical writing, which would be uh, things like maps or, or directions for getting between places. And so she's going to call this the spatial turn. Uh, we had the social justice turn in the last lecture, but she says the spatial turn in the disciplines of technical communication and rhetoric and writing studies has gained significant traction in re recent years, all of which affirm that where communicative practices happen is just as important as how and why they happen. Uh, and so I thought this was a, a, a particularly interesting quote to share with you, um, because we've been doing all of our communicative practices for this course in uh, in a sort of virtual environment. And so even that kind of gives us the opportunity to think about uh, how does our Canvas page have a particular story and uh, what kind of stories do do we imbue it with? Is it is it just this thing I have to get to on Sunday uh, and, and make sure I check off the full list or, or is it something with a little bit more uh, of a complex uh, interactive story to it? Um, but yeah, these are all kind of interesting uh, interesting quotes here, but but this is the way of thinking that that she's going to approach uh, that Hurley's going to approach technical communication, particularly uh, technical writing uh, pedagogy, which again is just just teaching practices or teaching philosophy. Um, so she gives us more uh, vocab to think about technical writing on top of um, uh, what uh, Walton and Jones and Moore gave us in the previous lecture. Um, so she says, hey, we might be able to spatially orient ourselves by thinking about technical writing through the ideas of trenches or frontiers, landscapes, cities, contact zones, borderlands, architecture, margins, and sites. And so uh, rather than go through and define each one like I did uh, in the previous lecture, I just wanted to show you an example uh, of technical writing to think about. Um, and this came from uh, from our course, uh, one of the submissions, uh, one of the really outstanding submissions, I should say, um, from last week for tailoring the syllabus. And so um, from the beginning of her uh, of Hurley's definitions, can we start to think about these spaces between information as trenches? Um, are the are the borders around this information literally spatial borders that have uh, a particular kind of interaction with the the spaces around it? Um, this would be a way we can be spatially oriented to this text um, and to get like a little bit more practical and, and toward, um, I think what Hurley is thinking about, um, is this actually a contact zone? Uh, is this a place uh, where the professor contacts uh, the students in the same way that physical places um, have have contact zones with one another? Um, another piece of uh, uh, 
vocab that I love to use throughout my my technical writing practice and and through my own studies and syllabi is architecture, right? Um, can we think about this document as having an interesting architecture the same way that we think about a building having an architecture? Because uh, we, all, we already use it with, uh, with websites. Um, some people uh, who mentioned uh, that coding is their expertise last week on the Canvas site will be familiar with this, that uh, that code and that websites have a particular architecture. But, but do we think about that with, with our writing as well? How, how do we, how do we come at a, a document like this the way an architect might might come at a, a real physical space. Um, and I think those are kind of examples of what Hurley is thinking about um, in addition um, to really thinking about maps and and really actual representations of, of borderlands and trenches, uh, things like that. Um, can we think about our, our documents and our technical writing that way as well? Um, and so uh, here's just kind of more information on spatial orientations that I pulled out from the article that are interesting. Uh, Hurley mentions that cultural geographers and spatial theorists have made apparent that understanding the spatiality of everyday life is integral to understanding how the spaces and places we inhabit always already produce and are produced by social, cultural, ideological, and rhetorical meanings. Uh, so if you remember positionality from the last uh, lecture, this is kind of the same idea. Um, that that we ourselves are the the product of uh, you know uh, social cultural practices or an ideo uh, ideology and things like that. Um, but here Hurley is saying, hey, on top of our identities, the places too are are social and cultural and ideological, and and they'll have different meanings depending on which uh, which culture you're coming from, what ide ideology you're coming from, and and even how you talk about it. So uh, the rhetorical meanings there. And so uh, I put a little note here, but but think about local, uh, think about policies, local laws, or even a student handbook um, for how you interact with, uh, let's say UD's campus. Um, there's particular policies that govern, um, that govern you know, how the spaces can be used when you need to book a space, things like that. Um, there are local laws obviously that govern uh, maybe where we should be drinking outside or, or having our loud study parties together. Um, and and even the student handbook, right? These things these things are just pieces of technical writing, um, just words really on a page that govern how we're allowed to interact with uh, with the space that that we're given. And so um, I, I say that because it's all theoretically really interesting to think about. Um, but in terms of your own practice, you you should really be thinking about that in technical writing. Like, is is what I'm writing altering my workplace somehow? Is it is it going to alter how people can behave or how they interact with the space? Um, these are all important considerations. Uh, and so now I want to share uh, a graduate seminar project that Hurley uh, used. This is all a quotation from her text, um, so I'm not uh, paraphrasing or summarizing here. Um, but she did a graduate seminar. Uh, ours is not a graduate seminar. So uh, your assignment uh, this week on spatial orientations will be a kind of boiled down version of this. I won't make you do the entire thing. Um, but Hurley writes, on the first day of class, I asked students to introduce themselves to one another through a mapping activity. Uh, using Google Maps, I asked students to plot the spaces, places, and pathways they inhabit by prompting them to consider personally significant physical and conceptual spaces and places, spaces and places you inhabit regularly, spaces and places you rarely frequent and or avoid, uh, commonly traveled routes or landmarks or monuments, literal or otherwise, that are important that uh, or that help you locate yourself. Um, and so I think there's both the identity work and, and the spatial work going on here. Uh, I think I might ask you to, to pick to do one of these um, and not the entire thing, but but a really interesting project, uh, I think. And again, I'm not sure I'm supposed to be uh, telling you where my assignments come from, but uh, but we are going to borrow this one, uh, and it comes from Hurley. Um, and here are the outcomes she saw. So so in our discussion, we'll think about um, if we see the same things. Um, but she says, first, it established from the outset of the course that even seemingly straightforward, neutral, and objective technical documents, such as maps, are always partial, contingent, and culturally situated and open to multiple interpretations and understandings. Uh, so I'm hoping that'll uh, continue in these assignments. Um, in our course, we've talked a lot about um, can we disrupt this idea that, that technical writing is just this uh, straightforward, neutral, objective uh, type of writing? Um, and how can we understand it otherwise? So hopefully we'll we'll continue to see that in this assignment. Um, secondly, uh, this one's a little tough to understand, but I'll try to break it down. Uh, she says it allowed the students to consider the connections among the spaces and places they inhabit, as well as to those that they don't, and prompted them to reflect on the ways in which their relationships to spaces and places intersect with their own embodied experiences. 
and with social practices that are influenced by cultural and ideological, ideological beliefs, which are then mediated through an array of technologies and texts. And so I think uh, what she's getting at here, I'll, I'll do it by way of example, um, is yeah, to think about, hey, if I do have commonly uh, traveled routes, um, do other ones that I travel have things in common? Am I, am I avoiding particular types of situations or particular uh, uh, types of places? And, and maybe why am I doing that? Um, and then reflecting on the, your relationship to those spaces um, in your own embodied experiences. So uh, that just means being a body traveling through those spaces. Uh, what new relationship do you have by, by reflecting on, on some of those patterns? Um, and then also to get to the bigger picture, uh, what about the social practices that you have um, either among your own social groups or, or in your culture uh, or beliefs that you just just happen to hold? How are those changed or how are those evident in the in the places you go? Um, and then lastly, which are then mediated through an array of technologies and texts. And so we're getting pretty far away here. Um, but to think about, um, yeah, if, if I bring up those spaces on on a technology like like uh, my iPhone and, and maps, um, do I see those those relationships and do I see those ideologies reflected? And I, I think you'd say most times you don't. Um, but again, just an idea, uh, the thought of how do we how do we really intersect um, with these spaces? And I think I think what we'll do in our uh, exercise as well is think about how how can we produce a text? How can you give um, directions, uh, let's say, um, that reflect these these uh, socially uh, oriented spaces. Um, and then lastly, she says their maps served as concrete references to spaces and places with which they had some working familiarity. Uh, they were use useful in helping them grapple with a highly theoretical, uh, with highly theoretical spatial concepts. I think I have an extra A in there. Uh, we engaged in our reading and discussion. And so, um, yeah, so hopefully the exercise that I do, a boiled down version of hers will help you uh, help you put into context what's been talked about here and, and maybe just give you some examples for defining it. But again, uh, kind of a big theoretical concept, um, but I think a kind of cool one that might uh, that might change both how we reflect on our technical writing and and how we reflect on the spaces we inhabit. And so, uh, yeah, look out for that assignment and discussion on Canvas. Thanks, everyone.